Hey guys, welcome to another video of Cloud Deep Dive. In this series of videos, we are talking about AWS networking. So far, we have discussed about VPC, our subnets, talked about different types, private and public subnets. We talked about security group, route table, and internet gateway. In today's video, we will talk about NACL, network access control list. So like I mentioned in my earlier video when we discussed for VPC, whenever you create a new VPC, by default it will create a NACL, which is Network Access Control List. So what is a NACL? NACL is an optional layer of security for your VPC that acts as a firewall for controlling traffic in and out of one or more subnets. So what does that mean? That like security group act as a security or kind of like you can control your tra incoming and outgoing traffic. Similarly, NACL is an optional way where you can add rules to control your incoming and outgoing traffic. So if you talk about uh, difference between security group and uh, network access control list, uh, security group, like I mentioned in my last uh, video on that, they are attached to the ENI. They control your traffic at the ENI level. While uh, network access control is NACL, they control traffic at the subnet level. So if I have, uh, suppose, four different EC2 instances, so I can have four different security group for each of the EC2 and to, uh, to control the traffic for those EC2 instances. But I can have only one NACL uh, at, the ins at the subnet level, which will be controlling traffic for those four EC2 instances. So uh, that's the difference that security group it's, uh, is at the EC2 level and uh, network access control list as the subnet level. Uh, by saying that, uh, uh, other fact about the NACL is that Network access control list, they are associated at the subnet level. They, they don't control traffic at the EC2 level. They control traffic at the subnet level. Uh, next difference between security group and NACL is uh, security group are stateful and NACLs are stateless. And I'll tell you more about that when we'll go into demo when I show the rules, how it works. Uh, so so we'll, we'll talk a little more about that during that uh, demo. Uh, next thing about NACL is like I mentioned, the NACLs are associated at the subnet level. So whenever you create a VPC, you get a default NACL and all the subnets created in that VPC by default will be created or by default they will be associated with the NACL. So like these are the two subnet, we created a VPC, these are the two subnets we created. So both of them will be uh, associated with the default NACL. Now I can create a new NACL and associate one of the subnet with a different NACL. So I can have multiple uh, NACL network access control list and I can associate a particular subnet with a particular NACL. The one thing which you need to remember that one subnet can be associated with only one network access control list, but my network access control list can be associated with more than one subnets. Another fact is when uh, each subnet has to be associated with at least one NACL. You cannot have a subnet which is not associated with any of the NACL. So let's see how it works in the console. I have logged in into my uh, AWS console and we'll go to our networking and content delivery section. Under that we'll find VPC. So under VPC, you will find a network ACLs under security. So we'll click on that. Like I mentioned, by default, a dem, uh, default a network ACL or network control access list will be created whenever you create a VPC. So this is the demo VPC we are using for this series. And uh, my default uh, network ACL is created here. If you see, you will find some details here. And uh, here you find the subnet association. So we have two subnet in our VPC and both of them are associated with this particular subnet. So if I try to do edit subnet association and if I try to remove it, uh, I cannot remove it. So like I mentioned that my subnet has to be associated with one of the NACL. So because there is no other NACL and this is the default one, so it has to be associated with it and I even cannot remove it from here. Uh, now let's try to create a new uh, NACL and see how it uh, looks. So if we do demo NACL, and we'll select our VPC and create. Uh, now what I can do, I can go to um, subnet association for our new uh, network access control list and we can do edit 
So you will see there are two subnets available. So let's see the subnet one I'm associating with my new network access control list. So now you can see my subnet one is associated with my new network access control list, which we created demo and uh, network. If I go to my previous one, uh, the one which was created default and go to the subnet association, you can see my subnet one is removed from here. Uh, right now it's associated only with the subnet two. So like I mentioned that one subnet can be associated with one network access control list only because I associated the subnet one with the different network, it's removed from this particular network access control list. And if I do edit, if I associate it here, and if I go to demo one, you can see it's removed from here. So with whatever uh, NECL you say, it will be associated with only one network access control list. So let's add it here again. And if I go, it's here, but if I go back to my default one, it's removed it from here. And the moment I, if I go back to my demo one, and if we remove it from here, so it will go back and it will be attached to my default network access control list. So here. So just few facts to remember about it that subnets by default, they will be associated with your default network access control list. One subnet has to be associated with at least one network access control list. Uh, and one network access control list can be associated with multiple uh, subnets. So now a second, let's talk about inbound and outbound roles. So like in security group, we talked about inbound rules and outbound roles. Similarly, NACL also have inbound and outbound rule. The only difference is <clears throat> in NACL, these rules are evaluated by the rule number. So you have to give a rule number and it goes in the increasing order. So suppose you have a rule number as 100, 200, 300, 400. So first rule 100 will be evaluated, then 200, 300, 400, 500. So it, it will go in increasing order. And the moment any rule is satisfied, it, it will take it and it will execute that rule there. Uh, so what does that mean? Right now I have a rule 100. What it says that it allow all the traffic for all the protocol from all the port range coming from the internet, it will allow the traffic. And similarly, the next rule says that similar kind of traffic coming from main, uh, on any protocol, any port range and coming from internet will be denied. So when the incoming traffic will come, it will evaluate rule 100 and rule 100 is saying allow so it will allow the traffic it won't go and further check any of the rule so the thumb rule in this is make sure that whatever the first rule matches the pattern your traffic pattern and whatever it's saying allow and deny it will take that action and it won't execute further any more rules uh, another thing like in security group we we were only able to allow things. We were we didn't have an option there to deny anything. But we, but in network ACLs, you can allow and deny both. By default, all the traffic is denied. This particular rule, you cannot remove this rule, the last one. So if nothing is matching, so it will be denied. But you can have rules where you can allow, you can add more rules where you can de deny the traffic. So if I go to inbound rules and edit and Suppose I'm adding a new rule at uh, suppose number 90. I'm saying my all traffic from all protocol and I can deny. So I have option allow and deny. So I can save changes. And you can see I added a new rule number 90 which says deny. So what does it mean that the moment uh, any traffic will come, it will execute rule number 90 and uh, it will say deny. It will deny it even though I have a rule saying allow, it won't execute this rule because my lower number rule saying that deny for that traffic. Similarly, we can have outbound rules and it works in the same pattern that you have to define the rule numbers and lower the rule number will take the preference. Okay, so let's delete that particular rule here. And Okay, so another thing like I mentioned a uh, little early that uh, there is a difference uh, between security group and NACL that security groups are stateful and NACL are stateless. So what does that mean? Stateless means that 
if any incoming traffic is coming your rules will be evaluated but when the response will go out your rules will again get evaluated like in security group if you remember we talked about that if my traffic is coming in my inbound rules will be evaluated but when the response is going out no rules will be evaluated security group will remember that okay this traffic came in we evaluated the rule but when the response will go out we don't need to evaluate any rule and we'll let it go but in case of network access control list rules will be evaluated in both when the request is coming in and when the request is going out so suppose anybody is connecting to your port 80 so this rule will be evaluated uh, that uh, shall i allow it or not when the response of that request is going out so these rules will be evaluated while the uh, traffic is going out so uh, that's all about uh, network access control list guys if you have any question on these uh, so let me know please feel free to put a comment and i'll be happy to uh, assist you on that and please like and share my video subscribe to our channel uh, next video i'll be posting uh, next sunday 7 pm till then thank you so much bye